what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy G for show, you feel me? So today, what I'm coming to do, I'm coming to talk to you about some live shit. What's up? So we all know that anybody and everyone can learn how to rap. It's not really that hard. It just takes consistency and having persistence on what you're doing and also just planning and getting little tasks done every single day, like writing, making sure that you work on your vocal skills. Also, what you can do is record every day and some people take it to the next level and they actually, they actually start doing their own production. So that can be really cool too. So if you like been rapping for a long time or you trying to like be more like Travis Scott type of uh, rapper or Kanye, Havoc from Mob Deep, Dr. Dre, Timberland did a little bit of rapping, you can do some uh, production work too. But the key element when it comes to rap is like we said, everybody can rap, but being exciting when you are doing your raps, that is very, very important. Because if you're not doing that, it's not gonna help your brand or anything, you know what I mean? So understanding that will actually help you succeed faster in hip hop. So we have a lot of people out here just, just trying to rap and that's a little dull for people. You know, if, you, if you're if you doing like some rap and it's really, 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 really dull, I'm gonna show you how to make it exciting or entertaining for your crowd or your fan base. Cause that is really important, you know? So like in the beginning, when I first started rapping, you know, it was kind of hard cause Back then, it was probably around when I was in high school. I'm a little older than most people. I got time in this. Uh, I was, it was probably around like 01, 02, something like that. I actually just started like freestyling. I didn't, we didn't have all this extravagant type of uh, technology like we have nowadays. And that's what's making the big difference in you know, the generation now, because now what you can do is rap, produce, and what you can do is do post-production on both. You can actually make videos and you can post it where people can respond to your videos. So that is excellent too. But the thing is, you just can't just rap nowadays and this is what I'm trying to get people to understand. When, when I first like stepped into the studio the first time, it was probably when I was around like 21, 22. And I seen one of my homeboys that I knew back when I was in Virginia, he was rapping. And you know, he was a little different than the people that I knew in Ohio. Cause he was from, uh, I think he was from, uh, trying to think, I think he was from like St. Louis or something like that. But uh, yeah, this guy, he had all types of style with what he was saying and the delivery that he brought. He was way different than people from Ohio because he's from a different area. But he wasn't just rapping, he put personality in what he was doing. And that's what I wanted to tell you today. So. Yeah, bring in the personality and I'm gonna show you one quick way that you can bring in your personality because that's what's important when it comes to your crowd and your audience. They wanna see who you are personally and they wanna see where you from. Why is it, why is where you from like how you say it? Or, you know, you say that your hometown something you need to be delivering that in your music. So 
one quick way that I will tell you to do this is to use the idea of swagger cues. So what swagger cues is, it's an ad lib, but it's a personalized ad lib. So find yourself a personalized ad lib. That is very, 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 very important, you know? So if you do that and understand the importance of making a swagger cue, people will be more drawn to who you are as a hip hop artist. All right. So examples of swagger cues could be like Travis Scott, how Travis Scott on sometimes he'd be like straight up. You know that one? If you heard that one, give me a like on that. Big Sean, he also says swerve, swerve. Two chains, he also, two chains, he says two chains. You know? So if you know about two chains, let me know about that. Give me a like or a comment on that. You know? So so the key thing when it comes to your swagger cues is when you're doing them, do them after you lay your tracks down. So when you do your main vocal, then go in and do it just like you do your normal ad libs. But what you want to do when you're doing the mixing and post-production is throw a little sauce on that shit and uh, put different effects on the vocals to make them stand out. That's what's very, very important about your swagger cue. And if you do this on your own, experiment a little bit. But if you're with a engineer and the engineer is pretty bomb at what he is doing, then what I want you to do is just kind of give them a description of what you want on your voice because that is very, very, very important too. So having a good idea of what you trying to display in this shit is what they call artistry, bruh, you know? So having that artistry will actually put you to the top of the game too, all right? So the reason why swagger cues will change your brand or your song is because swagger cues are a little bit different than just regular vocals, you know what I'm saying? If you just having regular vocals, then you just Rhyming like this, like this, like this, you know? And then it's, it's, it's just like, it's just regular. And you just don't want to be regular when you rhyming. So the thing is, is to put swagger cues in your production, in your songs, while you're writing. So while you're writing, you can come up with your swagger cue on your next song. And if you like it, hey, keep it. Cause it's gonna put personality on you, on your brand. And that's what is important in the end. So just like Big Sean say, I'm a swerve. 